Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to Skyrim's special edition. My name's Camel and this video is going to be a guide in which we will both acquire and inspect Azudal's set of armor, consisting of the helmet, the cuirass, the chest piece, the gauntlets and the boots. If you are looking for the video on the rings in the set, I've just put that video up and if you're looking for the guide for the dragon priest mask, Azidal, I'll have that video up tomorrow. So again, in this video we're just getting and talking about the armor set. Now if you are following this guide on the standard Skyrim edition, you will need the Dragonborn DLC in store to acquire these items. Also if you wish to skip to any specific point in the video, timestamps can be found in the description. And a friendly warning, to get this armor set you will need to cough up a total of 11,000 gold. Now to save some time in this video, during this quest we have to to make four investments. After we make each investment, we have to do what I'm going to call the waiting game. You make the investment, you travel away, you wait for three in-game days, head to Raven Rock, a courier will give us a letter to head back to the quest giver. Okay, so that's the waiting game. So let's go and get the quest. Firstly, we will need to head to Colbjorn Barrow. On the map, we can see that it is found just to the southeast of Raven Rock, of course, on the island of Solstheim in the Dragonborn DLC. Once here, speak to Rallius. He will give us the quest unearthed. And here, the first stage, we'll have to make the first investment of 1,000 gold. After doing so, play the waiting game. Once we get the call back from the courier, head back to Rallius. He will ask us to head into the barrow and clear out the Draga. Once we do so, we'll notice a strangely marked skull on this altar. Pick it up and it will open up the next part of the burial ground. As soon as we enter, we'll find Azudal's boots of water walking. Grab that boy. After this, continue on with the quest until we reach the third investment of 3000 gold. After making it, once again, go and play the waiting game. Once prompted by the courier to head back and speak to Rallius, do so. He will once again want us to head into the barrow and clear out Dem Draga. Now this time around we're going to be getting the gauntlets. So when we enter this big chamber we want to walk across this bridge into this room, turn left down the stairs and do a big sweeping 180 to the right heading down this second set of stairs. Now in front of us there is a doorway blocked by a stone. Behind that is where Azudal's gauntlets are. But to move that stone, we need to go into the parallel hallway and instead of going down the stairs here, turn to the right and on the wall there is a chain we can activate. Be sure to pull the chain and activate it. After doing so, head back to where that doorway was blocked by the stone and the stone will be there no more. Now we can grab Azidal's gauntlets of warding. Be sure to grab that boy. After this, we'll have to make the fourth and final investment of 5,000 gold. And of course, after we make the investment, play the waiting game. After doing that and prompted by the courier to head back to Rallius, head back to him. Except this time when we enter the camp, we will not find Rallius at all, but instead our quest marker will lead us to one of his journals. Upon reading it, there's some weird stuff in there, but we will of course have to head back into the barrow. There's been a slaughter of children, we'll find dead miners everywhere. So once we're in the barrow and in this room with the tiled floor, we want to head down the stairs and we'll find this circular room. Firstly, set both spinning stones to whales. After we pull the lever, it will open a door behind us, giving us access to the third piece, Azidal's Armor of Retribution. I grab that boy. Head back to the spinning stones and set them both to eagle. Pull the lever. The gateway in the middle of the room will be opened up and we want to head down the stairs. Finally, we will be encountered by this gateway. We want to set both the spinning stones to snake. Pull the lever and this will open the chamber in which we get access to Azidal's Helm of Vision. You can either pick it up or you can grab that boy. Okay, so now let's look at each piece of armor. First up we have Azidal's Helm of Vision. Its type is of course heavy, its slot is head, it has a base armor rating of 19, it has a weight of 6, a value of 1250. It can be upgraded with a steel ingot and also requires the advanced armor's perk to be upgraded. And its enchantment, conjuration and rune spells cost 25% more but have an increased range. This enchantment could be useful but it's too vague to really be sure 
as the increased distance granted isn't stated. Even then it would have to be one hell of a distance for this helmet to be worth wearing over other helmets. Secondly, we have Azidal's Armor of Retribution. He must have been a paladin. Its type is heavy, its slot is chest, it has a base armor rating of 40, a weight of 38, a value of 2760. It can be upgraded with a steel ingot and requires the advanced armor's perk to be upgraded and its enchantment. Enemies who strike you with melee attacks have a small chance of being paralyzed. This armor enchantment is actually a very nice way to deal with large groups of melee enemies, but because it's limited to affecting melee enemies, the item's usefulness is of course limited generally. Although Ash Spawn's casting Firebolt can still be paralyzed, but that's not exactly going to make you change your mind, is it now? Next, we're going to look at Azidal's Gauntlets of Warding. Its type is heavy, the slot is hands, it has a base armor rating of 14, a weight of 6, a value of 1750. It can be upgraded with a steel ingot and requires the advanced armor's perk to be upgraded. And its enchantment. Your wards are 25% less effective and absorb 50% of the magicka from incoming spells. Again, this enchantment is pretty weird and not really that useful. There might be some very specific situations in which you would want to sacrifice 25% of the damage being blocked in exchange to absorb half of the magicka cost of the spells being cast at you. But I feel like there are better ways to go about doing so without having to sacrifice your entire hand slots to specifically gain the benefits from this enchantment. And I mean, unless you're fighting a bunch of spellcasters and using ward spells, then you're going to get absolutely no benefit from this enchantment. Finally, we have Azidal's Boots of Water Walking. Its type is heavy, its slot is feet, it has a base armor rating of 14, a weight of 9, a value of 1125. It can be upgraded with a steel ingot and requires the advanced armor's perk to be upgraded and the enchantment it grants water walking. Also, if you wear any four relics of Azidal, it gives plus 10 enchanting. Okay, so a couple of things need to be covered with these boots here. Though six relics of Azidal exist, you will only receive Azidal's genius, which is the plus 10 enchantment fortification, if exactly four relics are equipped. Equipping more will deactivate the effect. This may come in handy when you plan on using the enchanting skill, provided you have specifically four of Azudal's artifacts equipped. The water walking effect is neat, but really won't come in too much use as there aren't really any great stretches of water that you need to cross at any point in the game. But it may be worth carrying the boots with you at all times, just in case you encounter a very select situation in which you need to water walk. Okay, so we've looked at each piece individually, now let's talk about it as a set. Just before we do so, I do want to make note that the set looks different on female and male characters. Two different helmets, on the female characters the back is completely exposed and is much more, well, exposed in general, I would say. Much less leg armor and also on a female character the boots appear to be just fur and leather instead of having any actual metal there. But now that's out of the way, let's actually talk about how this set works. So as a whole set, it seems to be pushing for use with some kind of battle mage character despite being a big clunky heavy armor set. And I feel like unless you were playing a very roleplay based character that revolved around this set somehow, I don't think Azidal's armor set will find much use in most playthroughs from your average Skyrim player. And the 4 armor piece set bonus of plus 10 to enchanting isn't really worth it either as you can get a much bigger boost to enchanting by simply wearing custom-made items that grant far larger boosts to enchanting, instead of taking up all four armor slots for a measly plus 10. The only piece I would think about carrying with you is the boots of water walking, as they cannot be disenchanted and are the only item in the game that allows water walking. There are also three potions of water walking in the Raven Rock Mine that also grant the ability but they cannot be reproduced. And unlike Azudal's Boots of Water Walking, 
they are not a reliable source of the water walking ability. So you might want to carry the boots with you as a nice ace up your sleeve or boot up your pant leg. And that's pretty much what I think of Azudal's armor set. If you have any cool ways you think you could use any of these items, be sure to let me know in the comments. I'm certain there's some cool weird ways that I haven't thought of. And there we have it ladies and gentlemen, I've been Camel, I do hope this video helped you out. Be sure to leave a like, comment and share. Individual guide links can be found in the description if you are looking for more. Also down there is a link to my Twitter page, be sure to follow me to guarantee you get notifications when I upload a new video. Feel free to check out the playlist on screen, thanks for watching and supporting the channel and I'll see you shortly in the next video.